Hello, all you skibbies. This is Great Answer. Welcome to the Great Answer Podcast, formerly known as the Ropecast, and uh, still going strong, if a little irregularly. Uh, we're hitting about a bi weekly podcast uh, production, and that's for various reasons. One is that I seem to be having trouble actually getting the interviews scheduled that I want to do. I have all kinds of people that I want to interview and it's not their fault. It's my own fault. Part of the joy of traveling and stuff, such. And um, for some reason in the past trip to LA, I never got to the point where I pull out my phone and say, let's do an interview now. I would just tell people I wanted to interview them later on. Uh, and part of that is because of the things that went on at the Los Angeles Grew, which was uh, a weekend ago. And uh, there was uh, things like a great class uh, led by a guy named Dave on um, vulnerability as a top. And he thought he was kind of feeling kind of vulnerable doing it. He figured nobody would want to come. And it ended up being standing room only. And it was some amazing stuff about uh, vulnerability Um the myth of the infallible dominant um, and things like that and the the fact that you know in order to be more intimate you need to be vulnerable and one way vulnerability while it is idolized and romanticized is probably not that effective um, so I really liked that uh, Demon Six did a uh, really fantastic uh, class very interesting class on bringing religious philosophy um, as usual, at the LA Guru is always famous for its polyamory discussions, which went really well. There was a great class on a humiliation play by Ruminating, uh, who returned from the San Diego Guru to this one. And uh, yeah, it was just really, really a lot of fun. They also gave the We Think You're Groovy Award to uh, Gabriel, uh, Master Gabriel, who's uh, uh, organizer there. Um, and if you don't know about the We Think You're Groovy Award, most conventions invite people to come and present and don't pay them. So an unconference would end up being a place where we have somebody who didn't show up, didn't teach anything, and we send them money. Uh, it makes sense to me in my twisted way, and it's a lot of fun to do. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out to our new experiment that we did. We had the, uh, the event meet and greet at the Pleasure Chest in Los Angeles. Uh, which was just a delightful host. Uh, it's a, it was a nice big space. There was a place to sit. We asked people to bring hors d'oeuvres, as I call them. Um, it's W-H-O-R-E. Uh, and there was plenty of good food. And we had a DJ that they provided just unexpectedly. They were there. Uh, and, of course, you know, it's the pleasure chest. So there's all kinds of cool toys and twisted bunk rope and things like that. So... Uh, we really appreciated having it there. And uh, in case you tuned into this podcast just to find out who won the poll, uh, yeah, that's right. We had a contest with the uh, the potluck meet and greet. We said that whoever uh, won, whoever uh, got the most votes for the best dish would get two free passes to the next L.A. Grew. Now, if I was an unethical podcaster, I would put this announcement somewhere, somewhere way, way at the end of the podcast. But uh, I'm not an unethical podcaster. I'm going to announce them here at the beginning, so you don't have to listen to the whole podcast if you're wondering if you won or not. Uh, but I am going to force you to, to understand that this podcast is brought to you by Twisted Monk. And you know this because at the meet and greet, we talked a lot about Twisted Monk rope. I brought along some with me there, and uh, the Pleasure Chest actually sells a lot of Twisted Monk rope. One of the neatest things that I saw uh, actually Sunday night when Naya and I had been teaching, um, we had taught Tie em Up and Fuck em, which has uh, one harness that is done with big, thick nylon rope and two harnesses that are done with uh, basically some kind of hemp or jute rope. And we were using Twisted Monk. And uh, later on, I saw someone standing there uh, <laughs> oh, back in the back where they have the Twisted Monk rope with their arms literally piled with the packages of Twisted Monk rope. And it made me feel good that we could inspire them to help support a one of the original kinky entrepreneurs out there. Um, he is one of the most ethical uh, businessmen I know, inside or outside of kink, and his drive and determination are absolutely inspiring. So, twistedmonk.com, you should go there. They are sponsors of this podcast, and I appreciate it. And now, for the results. So, our highly scientific poll, which was sent out via MailChimp, uh, gave people the opportunity to vote um, for various things. And the winner 
with 30% of the vote was, -na 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 that's my drum roll, not a very good one. Um, it was something that was, was quoted as uh, putting the meat in meet and greet, bacon wrapped goat cheese stuffed dates that uh, were made and they were made and they were put out and they disappeared very quickly um, yet still gained more votes than anyone else there was a close runner-up which was uh, these salmon wrap twisted thingies um, but uh, surprisingly I, I was expecting the pizzas to get more votes um, but uh, they didn't do it now here's the thing the winner of the two free passes to next year's LA grew is paper doll Congratulations, Paper Doll, for it. Thank you for making those things. But wait, there's more. We also said that everybody who uh, oh, went into that email and um, clicked on it would get to uh, get entered into a drawing for the San Diego Grew, which hasn't even been posted yet, um, but it's going to happen on August 12th and in San Diego. And guess what? Hey, Miss Stacy. You clicked open the the mail the uh, the by the Mailchimp email, and you were the completely randomly chosen recipient of a free pass to the San Diego Grew. I'll be contacting both the winners um, by email, but uh, this is a good reason why you should try and subscribe to the Grew's letter at Grew.space. Um, you'll see tickets available for several grooves there already, and I can tell you we, um, we have at least four other grooves in the works in Chicago, Philly, Austin, and Baltimore uh, that are still coming. And don't forget, also Ramble Grew is coming up. So go to Grew.space to find all the information you need. One of the things I'm going to try and do is uh, try that whole Spotify playlist um for each groove for the after groove um, to see if people want to help add to that. Other places that I will be, I will be heading to Baltimore in a couple of weeks. We are doing an all-day consent incident response training program. And uh, I really appreciate the Playhouse is going to be the location that we're doing that there. And uh, Lonnie Angel is the coordinator locally. Uh, we're also getting help from a few other sponsors, including uh, Dark Odyssey and uh, an anonymous sponsor who has been supporting us through the Consent Rocks Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Consent Rocks. Um, and... Uh, the thing I wanted to let you know is that a very popular writer named Ferret, who does great uh, sci-fi, uh, sorry, speculative fiction, among other things, uh, wrote me a review because he went to the consent incident training at the Academy of Fetish Arts in Cleveland. And here's what he said. It's all his words. I'm going to read one word for word. It feels like bragging, but hey, I'm just quoting a writer here. Um, quote, in the rush to judge, conclude, stigmatize, and blame, kink organizations often forget the vital skill of simply listening. Great Answers Consent Incident Training uh, outlines a radically new approach to defusing the explosive issues of conflict that plague convention, outlining a methodology that works in parallel with the usual board measures of deciding who gets kicked out. Time was that kink clubs felt no need for a dedicated dungeon monitor. And King Conventions felt no need to have an EMT on duty. With luck, Great Answer will make consent incident responders a necessary part of every healthy get-together. That's from Ferret Steinmetz, the author of Flex, The Flux, Fix, and you can find out more of his writings, which are fantastic about poly and stuff like that, at theferret, F-E-R-R-E-T-T, dot com. Thank you, Ferret, for saying that. I appreciate it. Um, if you can't make it out to the East Coast, uh, oh, you, I should give you a link, huh? CIR, that's Consent Incident Response, CIRBaltimore.bpt.me. Um, so that is how you can find it, and uh, you will also be able to find it in the show notes for the podcast, or just um, go to uh, consent.rocks, and we will have links there for the tickets as well. Um, they'll be on sale for the next couple weeks, um, and we would appreciate, even if you um, want to sponsor someone to go there, you can certainly do that. This is a all-day training. It is intense. You do a lot of new skills, including um, uh, nonviolent communication and um, 
motivational interviewing and uh, just the basics on how to provide a safe or, uh, safe and supportive space for people that are involved in consent incidents. So we've worked very hard on this and we are really proud of the things we've accomplished. And so I hope you'll uh, come to come to it. If you can't make that one, uh, you could always come out in June uh, to Boundless. Uh, that is out a four-day kinky retreat uh, just north of San Francisco. And um, I had just recently confirmed that I will be out there for one day um, just to come up and teach a three-hour consent incident response uh, presentation. It's not a full training, um, but I think you can get a lot out of it and at least get an idea of if you want to come for the full training. And you can find out more about that at boundlessevents.org, and that is June 9th through 12th. Uh, sounds like a fantastic event regardless. Um, and if you're more close to home, my home, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, Naya and I, my partner, will be teaching at A Woman's Touch on January 22nd uh, here, and we will be teaching our uh, How to Pleasure a Man, which is kind of um, because we can't print in the paper uh, good blowjobs and anal sex. <laughs> um, but it's a fun three-hour class. Um, we've gotten really good reviews on it, and you can find out more about that at sexually, sexualityresources.com. All right. Now, I just thought for a change, you know, I've talked a lot about, you know, these heady stuff like security and things like that. I thought it might be fun for just a change to talk about sex. Yeah. Because um, we did, for our New Year's Eve, we got to go and do a private party, Naya and I, and we got to sit there and um, we showed some time up and fuck them stuff. And one of the things we did was we shared our top three um, tips for oral sex, specifically oral sex on each other. And uh, while I cannot speak for Naya, I actually had hoped to do this podcast before. Remember we talked about having trouble scheduling interviews? I even didn't get to schedule this interview with my partner who I live with um, because I'm a bad podcaster. But I am going to tell you what my top three uh, techniques for cunnilingus are. I love going down on women. Uh, to quote Cat Williams, the reason pussy tastes so good is because it's made of pussy. Uh, and I have had some partners who are like, well, you know, you don't have to do that. And I'm like, I, I want to, if you don't, I mean, even if, even if it's not their primary source of pleasure, if they don't mind, I enjoy it myself. Uh, it's kind of funny and that people will talk about 69 and they'll be like, well, I just want to concentrate on you and just have you do the pleasure. You don't understand part of my enjoyment is having, being able to eat pussy while I'm having oral sex. So I'm a big fan, in case you haven't noticed, um, like literally wall decorations that are vulvas and things like that. So when I uh, describe these three techniques, I will start with a huge, huge caveat um, that uh, these are things that work for me, that, that my partners enjoy. And I won't say all my partners enjoy that. Some of them do. Some of them could care less. I just say that these are things that, that tend to be um, useful and tend to be things that you may not try already that you may want to try, uh, especially if you haven't had a good experience with cunnilingus before. But please remember that the number one tool of any kind is always communication. It's always telling your partner, hey, a little bit to the left, hey, do that, um, grabbing their head, having to do things, saying slower, saying faster, things like that. Communication is going to be the only thing that will tell you what you actually like. Uh, I always find it funny when people will say, uh, oh, yes, I know exactly how to bring any woman to orgasm. I'm like, no, you don't. You know how to bring the people that you have had brought to orgasm in the past to orgasm. And maybe. And really, I wouldn't say you brought them there. You helped them get there. Maybe. That's the way I'd say it. I will help people have an orgasm. So I'm getting off track already because, hey, I just tend to like to rhapsodized philosophical. So let's talk the actual down and dirty tricks. Um, so the first one is um, the involving the forehead and the chin. So here's the thing. People talk a lot about the G spot, you know, going in into the uh, vaginal canal and pushing up. And um, 
The thing that a lot of people forget is that the clitoris has a lot of different parts and areas. And one of those areas that you can get into that also kind of can stimulate the G-spot is actually on the mons veneris, the, the, the mound. Um, what is the, the, the fatty upper pussy area is one of the things that they will, they will call it. Whatever you want to call it. Um, what I found is that I get a really good response if I, while going down on someone, sort of angle my forehead so it is pushing against their mons. And uh, for bonus points, if you can maybe find a, a motion to do with your forehead that they happen to enjoy. Now, that may be a circular motion. It may be a thrusting motion. It could be anything, whatever. You know, you'll, you'll figure out what it is that the person likes by communicating with them. And if you can learn, it's kind of like, you know, think about rubbing your tummy and patting your head at the same time. You can do one motion with your forehead while at the same time you're doing something different with your tongue or lips or things like that. Uh, it's a, it's a, a interesting technique and uh, it can also, you know, be one of those things you change up and do for people. So use your forehead. If you're in like a 69 position or something like that, use your lower chin or hey, even, you know, your chest or just reach your hand down and press. But, you know, take advantage of the sensitivity of the mons while you are going down to someone. The second technique that works really well for an eye, especially, and I learned this one specifically from Naya. And I guess kind of one of those things where, like you learned it and you want to go back to all your old partners and say, hey, I, I learned this thing that I didn't do with you. Can we try it again? Because, you know, I, I think I can do better this time. Um, and that is to simply slow the fuck down. Um, when you see porn and things like that, you oftentimes see people flicking their tongue at a high rate of velocity and vibrators, you know, that, that are trying to say, you know, go really, really fast, really, really fast sometimes slower is better okay in fact um slow long languorous licks across the entire vulva or the clitoral hood or that area really really works well especially in in variation with things um now it is a difficult habit to get into especially if you are being stimulated at the same time um, I find that my control of my tempo tends to be directly proportional, inversely proportional, sorry, to the amount of stimulation I'm getting. Um, but that's a challenge to my mind. I like that kind of challenge. And frankly, that's kind of something I enjoy too, is that, you know, blowjobs often show, you know, the, the, the jackhammer kind of head over the, the cock. And frankly, I can't think of anything I love more than a long, slow lick along the scrotum and the, the cock. So, hey, uh, do the same thing for your partner and uh, slow way, way down. Again, this kind of works really well, especially if combined with something that may go fast. Like maybe they enjoy being fingered really fast while your tongue is slowly licking across the clit or things like that. Um, now, you notice I say clit or things like that, and that brings us to number three, because the here's the thing. The, the last the, the last thing that, that I learned that helps my cunnilingus game is the spot is not the spot. Now, you, you hear people talking about, you know, don't go straight for the clitoris, you know, go around the edges and give them foreplay and things like that before you focus in. Here's the thing that they don't say. Sometimes, even after you've done all the foreplay and stuff like that, and it is time where the person wants you to be hitting that spot, it's not always the clitoris. I mean, if I was looking at, uh, at Naya's, a little too much information here, but if I was looking straight at uh, Naya's clitoris and it was like the center of a clock, her spot is about at 2 p.m., OK, that's that's where that's the spot that she likes to have the tongue uh, licking or rubbing or things like that. That is where she really, really gets off on. Um, and here's the thing. It, there, if I was go constantly going for the clit or things like that, the clit is is not, you know, they make the joke about the clit's hard to find. It's not that hard to find. OK, it's there if you know what you're looking for. And I understand if you don't. Hey, even you know, diagrams of the vulva that were put on tampon packages didn't show the clit for many years. Some of them may still not do it, but I mean, you know, the, lots of people didn't even know they had one. And those are the people that owned them, much less people who were, you know, trying to play with them. But once you know it's there, it's not that hard to find. 
problem is, is it's not always the easy button that it is portrayed as. Um, it can definitely be too sensitive, but it may be that the, the area that needs to be, um, that, that the person really, really wants you to focus on is somewhere else. And this is why I'm a big fan of, again, communication. Uh, personally, I like it when my lover will put their hands in my hair and sort of just guide me to the right space. Not because I'm saying, ah, oh, you will tell me what to do and how to please you. I do want them to tell me how to please them. I'm a sadist. That means that I can tease them. I can deliberately choose not to do it. I can do it for a while and then stop. Um, or I can do it until they come many, many, many times. Uh, that is part of our fun. So um, those are my top three cunnilingus tricks. One, use your forehead uh, on the mons. Um, slow the fuck down. Try going really, I mean, try going so slowly that it like takes you a minute to go from the bottom of the pussy lips all the way up to the top of the clitoral hood. I mean, see if you can do that um, and see how agonizingly pleasurable it might be. Now, of course, if they grab your head and be like, God damn it, start doing something that's enthusiastic consent right there um and last the spot is not always the spot try and find out where uh, the clit is not always the spot um try and find out where that special spot is on your partner's body that is it. and by the way i should add that spot can move from time to time sometimes that uh, that is the area that naya once touched sometimes it's uh further down underneath the clit uh, more around the 6 p.m position it just depends on on what's going on so those are my top three i'd like to hear if you have any suggestions for oral sex so let's let's stick to kind of lingus first of all and if you can want to say what it is you like or what it is you like your partner to do um that would i would like to hear either one uh, what it is you like to try yourself. Um, the uh, number to call, if you want to actually be on the podcast, that's right, I can actually put you on the podcast, is 608-432-5668. Uh, I'd love to put your sound bites on there. If you want to email me something, you can always get me at greatanswer at protonmail.com. And uh, you can also reach me on Twitter. I'm Great Answer there. I'm Great Answer on FetLife. I'm Great Answer pretty much everywhere, except at my company, Gray Miller Creative, which is what helped create this podcast. I hope you have enjoyed it. Coming to you from the cold, cold rope bondage capital of the world, Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Great Answer. Hope you have fun getting it on. That's not really a good tagline either, but it's getting better. We'll figure it out. 